Austria 3, Netherlands 2. Before I start, guys, shout out to everyone in Kenya. We are going through a revolution. Innocent people are dying, man. Like, this is insane. And every single recap I do from now on, we're shedding light on what's happening in our country. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Austria 3, uh, Netherlands 2. Austria have um, managed to stop the group, Group D. Despite uh, all odds, they were bottom of the group. I think first game they lost to to France. Um, actually, no, they were third in the group. Poland actually lost to Netherlands as well, and um, yeah, Poland were bottom of, bottom of the group because I think they lost by no, they lost by a goal. <laughs> anyway, can't remember. Just know they were at the bottom of the group. Um, then second game, obviously, great win from uh, by beating Poland three one. Anatovic had probably his one of his best games as an Austrian player, and he was his captain as well. And he's led his team again to another famous, famous victory against the Netherlands. This game was just... Well, to be fair, I didn't get to watch the whole game as a whole because I was trying to watch both games. But at the same time, we're also trying to just keep up with what's happening in our country. So I don't have a full, full breakdown. I'll just... Because I, I had to watch the highlights again. I watched parts of it, so I'm just going to take you through what I saw and, yeah, what I think about Austria. Um, Netherlands, I think, first of all, Van Dijk, vibes defending. What was that? Like, you end up putting, every, like, Sabitzer onside. Everyone is, keep, like, everyone is keeping a high line. You're the only one at the back. Sabitzer now has, a like, he's, he's, he's onside. He is 100% onside. But this aura defending, like, okay, I have said nice things about Van Dijk on this channel. Um, he's a very good defender. Like he's just as a leader. Like there's that aura is good many times. <laughs> like there's many times that it works, but when it doesn't work, it looks really bad. Let me just say that. Um, I I still re really rate him as a defender. Let me just put that out there. I'm not trying to um, say he's not a great defender, but at times he's not a great team defender. Like, defending as a team, as a unit. And because this is not the first time this has happened. There's moments in the Premier League where he has done this, where he ends up being the last man and he's it's like it's just not his job, right? Like Because being the last man, you always have to know that you are keeping everyone on side, right? And there's, there's also a reason why teams stop doing this last man thing. This thing used to be done a lot back in the day with Vidic and Sol Campbell having a last man. But teams are so good at beating offside traps nowadays like people just stop doing it right because it just takes one person to be to be late in going up and then um everyone everyone is onside that's another reason why most teams stopped having defenders on the line during corners because once the corner comes in the second wave when if the defenders take long to push up well that's one of the reasons another reason is you're just in the goalkeeper's way so it doesn't make sense and you need more bodies you'd rather block um You'd rather contest the attempt, right, than trying to contest the shot. So after someone has headed the ball, it's hard sometimes. If it goes over the goal, the defender on the line, there's nothing he can do. He can't use his hand to catch it. And by you not being there, the goalkeeper just has space to go either side, dive for it, and actually, no, I'm going, I'm not going to hit anyone. But another big reason is that when the ball, when the, when the corner comes in and then it's headed out, for example, that second phase of play, if it comes in quick enough and you have guys on the line, they put everyone on side. So, I mean, it's it's just it's something that it like as as a defender he needs to be quite much more aware of. He's the leader of that back line. So, yeah, that was quite disappointing. And that turned out to be the winner, Ms. Marcel Sabitza. Great finish to the top of the uh, to the roof of the net. Um, yeah, first goal as well. Uh, the Marlin own goal. They left so much space on the right side. I forget who was playing on the right side. Who was it who was playing on the right side? So whoever the right back was, Gatruda. Though because they didn't start with Dumfries this time around. They really started with the, like they were trying to keep it very narrow. They play a 4-3-3, but they're playing very narrow. But see, they're playing a 4-3-3 and the right back is pushing up. So like the defense is more or less like this. And the ball went to the wing. I forget who the number eight was. Um, was it 18? I think it was Schmidt. Anyway, he gets the ball on the wing. He Crosses the ball. Marlin is trying to get back to defend because he's trying to cover for his for Gatrida who has pushed up, and the ball goes into his net. And I think that just set the tempo of the game because Austria really, really needed to score early and put pressure on the Netherlands. 
Um, I really liked Cody Hakpo's goal. I feel like this is something he has been trying the whole tournament. Every game he has played, he's always trying to cut back in, always trying to cut back in. Um, this one actually worked. The first game he also scored, he scored a deflect. The goal was deflected. The shot was deflected and it was a goal, but this one just was straight to the bottom corner, like really, really good finish. Um, then Schmidt, header. That was a header in the in the D by the Aust- by Austria to make it 2-1. Just... Um, 12 minutes after Hakpo had scored. Um, again, leaving space in the D. Like, why are you leaving someone so open in the D? And then they try to clear off the line. Like, they're just scrambling in defense. There's just moments... I feel like the defensive transition of the of the Dutch is something that's going to be their undoing. Um, they just don't switch from offense to defense as smoothly, right? And you can see it in almost every goal. Um, yeah, because it's just a loss of possession, turn of possession, and... They're either they're either the way they set up is lopsided, like the we said about the first goal, or Van Dyke is trying to do that aura defending thing. Um, they're just scrambling. Uh, Memphis managed to get us that goal as well for the Netherlands. This game, Netherlands equalized twice. Um, shout out to them for actually coming back twice and getting goals. But the big day belonged to Austria, who now qualify. Ralph Ranik is doing a thing, like we actually need to give credit to Ralph Ranik and shout out to Biko as well. Conrad on um on our lives, which was, I think it was three or four days ago when he said Austria is the team to watch. And yeah, we all kind of laughed at him. Look where we're at now. Austria, top of the group, um, ahead of France and Netherlands. Netherlands now have to wait for their fate to find out who they're playing. But I have a feeling they're going to be playing England, but let's see how that goes. So, yeah. Austria 3, Netherlands 2. Austria top the group and qualify as group winners. <laughs>